Welcome, 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 everybody, to another What's Up Wednesday. Man, we got a rowdy group tonight. Let me show you this. This is the Embassy RV. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awesome. They are in New Hampshire where it's getting dark pretty quick. Um, what we've done here today is put um, a group of uh, owners together to do a roundtable. And let me kind of show you how this is going to roll tonight. We're going to have the owners talk about uh, some of uh, their vans, uh, why they chose this. Here's the group where uh, they're uh, willing to take their look at that handsome group. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> Watch those cords. Um, and what we're going to do is um, cover these topics tonight. We're really excited and cover. Yeah, we talk about our vans a lot, but it's really about the people and sometimes the gear that makes your uh, traveling in a van so exciting. Um, I did this survey a few hours ago, and people are really interested in some of this, these topics tonight. So I'm really excited about this. And just thanks, everybody, for, for sharing. Uh, this is a, a daytime shop that they sent me. And um, apparently you can get an embassy in any color as long as you want silver. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, this is the entire group. Uh, maybe uh, Sherry and Marsha, just tell us a little bit about how this came together. Please. Yeah, Mar Marsha, where were you, Marsha? I was in at Vantopia. Yep. And what did you say to us? Would anybody like to come to New Hampshire for a fall meetup? <laughs> and she had 24 people that responded. She had to cut it off, and in the end, 18. So this is really about family. Not just the embassy family, but the Vantopia, anybody that travels. We just love the community and, and what you're building, Scott. So thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, it's a good point to, to make it. It's really, the van's important, floor plan systems. Really, It's really about the people, though, at the end of the day. And by the way, this is the owners coming together. As you heard, this is not a sponsored video by Embassy RV. This They really had nothing to do with this, actually, right? Um, but we just love <laughs> Uh, fair enough. So it's just so, so many thanks for everybody um, being willing to share your camp time. This is the fire they had last night, which is pretty awesome. And um, we do have libation live in about 45 minutes. I'm trying something brand new. This is um, ranch water, but it's made with tequila. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we got this day in history coming up at the same time of libation live. And we have a song inspired by a disaster, a train wreck. So you don't want to miss that toward the uh, top of the hour. We go to about um, 7 p.m. Central. And if you can help us out with your questions, uh, three stars, three question marks, it helps me and the team see your questions and get them answered more readily. Uh, let me just kind of share, or uh, please share where you're watching from, super important. Um, and if you don't see your country's flag on the map, then shout out big and loud where you're watching from on planet Earth, because we'd love to uh, put your flag on the map. Uh, this is clearly an international sensation, which is awesome. Where's my cursor? I've lost it. Here we go. Um, let me show you. We're just really fast where I'm coming at you from. They'll ask the campers where they are generally. Uh, so I'm coming at you from home base, Florida. What am I doing here? Uh, Kyle, my partner, he's selling one of the Airbnb properties. So I'm here helping pack and manage things. It's kind of chaotic. If you've ever tried to move, you know that that is probably the least fun thing in life. Uh, we're down by West Palm Beach, a little north of Fort Lauderdale. Um, and weather. Uh, so, uh, campers, tell us just generally where are you in uh, New Hampshire? In Littleton, north of the white of uh, Franconia and Notch. Littleton, north. New Hampshire, yes. Littleton, New Hampshire, okay. And if we look at the weather where I am, it's pretty warm. It's endless summer. Florida it was 85. It's about 90% humidity. It's so exhausting. What's the weather like in, in your camp site tonight? 60 degrees and a little chilly. It gets down to about well, 39 last night, 40 Whoa. tonight. <laughs> 70, during the, day and 70 sunny. during the day and sunny. Yeah, That's perfect, right? Um, and in my area here in Southern Florida, gas is about three to three and a half bucks a gallon. And in this area, Florida real estate is still pretty hot. Uh, half a million will get you a decent condo and a million will get you a reasonable house. It's pretty extreme. <laughs> um, what, what's the uh, pricing and, and housing situation like there in your area, Marsha? Four forty-five. Uh, yes, I think it's what three three seventy-seven, three eighty-five. Yeah, three sixty. Yeah. Four forty-five for diesel, I think. Okay. And ho housing is very rural, so there's not a lot on the market. So come area. to New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> Live free or die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of politicians running around up there, so that's kind of interesting. Um, 
So this is my October route. Um, I'm actually returning to home base a couple months earlier than uh, uh, normally I do. So if you're kind of looking at these towns I've circled, I'm going to be passing through them. And while I'm in home base from October through really February, we're doing a lot of uh, campouts and state parks and a whole bunch of stuff. Stay tuned for that. But uh, very intentionally returning to home base a little earlier than planned. Um, oh, come on. There we go. Uh, my video on Sunday when it posts is going to be on an alternative to campfires. I saw your big campfire and generally I like them when I don't have to be too close to them, but in campgrounds are really, you know, they're really squished apart. Um, I have a, a really new, uh, a very cool, cool solution. Uh, so you don't want to miss that. And next week we have our guests. Uh, uh, this is Terry Minchie. We've had him on before. He's a really prolific art, uh, author and his book, Secrets of RVing and a Diamond a Dream. We're going to talk about cheap RVing, which is something I do not do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you want to stay tuned for next Wednesday. Just a couple more things. If you are looking for um, the Roundup information, caravan information, that's where we drive our vans around together and Van Breeze, that's where we camp together. A Roundup is a meetup or this program, What's Up Wednesday, uh, and even Zoom events. You can go to my uh, webpage, go small, livelarge.com slash events. And you can actually review those. You can actually click to add the event to your calendar now. So something I've been working on for a while, and I'm really excited to do that. And we will uh, give another shout out. The volunteers are needed to really get this channel over the, uh, really accelerating into, into next year. I'm really excited about this. So if any of these um, skill sets or something you have, many of you have reached out. We'll be talking about this uh, together very soon. Uh, we just really want to get there. We'd love to. I'd love to get to fifty thousand subscribers by the um, by the um, by the Tampa Super Show, which is in January. Um, I know, right? So, and and again, it takes a family to really pull this stuff off. It takes a team. So, um, so again, what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, take the back seat a little bit tonight. We're going to give the embassy owners here a chance to talk, and uh, that's what we want to talk about. Is um, Oh, let me do this before we get going on the talk. So uh, if you want to learn more about Embassy, uh, they have a website called embassyrv.com. And if you didn't learn about Embassy through uh, me or this channel um, or this fine group of folks, um, uh, if you can give us a shout out that helps Embassy RV, the corporate headquarters, put their money where they, um, a lot of you have found out through my working with them for what, four years now? It's pretty incredible. Excuse me. So if you could help us there. And I just got to give a hat off to Sherry and the administrators for this. Yeah. How many folks do you have now, Sherry, on this? 1,700. 1,700. That is incredible. Again, all organic. Nothing embassy has to do with this. It's all, there's four administrators. So just a huge shout out to all of them and all the hard work they do. Uh, speaking of shout outs, so this is our group of uh, folks tonight that are going to uh, share some information with us. So if they're all kind of in the dolphin floor plan, which who would want to kind of describe that quick the dolphin S floor plan. So, oh, dolphin right. S. so dolphin S is a um, chassis of your choice. You can choose a Mercedes, a transit or a Ram. And it is two couches, which come together as a queen size bed. So similar and to a Trovato K. Yeah. So similar to a Trovato K. And you can choose a KL on the lithium batteries that you choose to put in your um, embassy. But that's pretty much the floor plan. Which is pretty cool. And they have four, three floor plans to choose from. One has uh, just one couch, right? And the other has kind of bedroom in the back. I think that's Bob and Sue's um, Dolphin SL model. So. Yeah. Yeah, what's cool, three floor plans, three van chassis, and that's really unusual in the RV space right out of the gate. So yeah. what I'm going to ask the, um, the, the group here tonight is to answer these questions for us. We'll kind of do a little round table on these questions. So why did you buy a camper van versus any other kind of RV? And then what other B-van brands did you look at before uh, landing on Embassy? And then we'll get into their travel gear. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. So who wants to go first? Why a, why a van and then what are vans you look at? Okay. Uh, we had a travel trailer. We had one where our kids were younger and it was fine. And then we had one when we were older and it becomes more work when you're older. And so we find out we're more travelers and campers. And so it was just time to get something that was more nimble. And it turns out I like traveling more than my husband and I can just go off in my camper van all by myself. 
<laughs> That's perfect. <Yes>. Me too. <laughs> I let him come sometimes. I've even let him drive twice. <laughs> That's great. So you don't have to travel with a couple. I love it that you know people are not Velcro to have to do this and you know blah blah blah. So uh, what the B vans did you look at? Well, I was looking at one brand, and my sister said, "Check the quality." <laughs> And I love the looks of the Travato. And then I stumbled upon you and Embassy. And I said, my husband will hate when things break. So let's get the quality product. And watched a lot of videos and met one of the members. And I said, that's it. And here we are. That is super great. Uh, who would like to go next? Uh, why a van? And what else did you look at? So I'll go next. So we were early buyers on embassies. We researched about three years. We joined every wannabe group there was, Travato, Coachman, all of them. And we watched multiple videos every night. When we got home, we watched videos. We found embassy through Scott. And then we were, we were sold because we wanted to be able to have no propane, no black tank and be very versatile and traveler friendly and so we found that and we were sold right away and we have a 2021 build on a mercedes 2019 four by four sprinter we upgraded the sumo um suspension in the back with the bigger tires and we like that because it's better with the wind when it blows and we're very happy with it. We just brought it back for maintenance after three years. And wow. we got superb service, treatment. All of it was great. Thank you for that. Uh, who would like to go next? Why a van? And what other vans did you look at? Uh, hey, Scott. Guy. Good, good Guy, to see what's you. up? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, but I'm going to defer to others because I've answered all these questions on your channel before. Well, I'm just so, here to show the so. fan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say we looked at, and we started out with an interstate, um, the Airstream. Uh, Airstream interstate. Second was um, Travato. Then we looked at the coachman. And then, Scott, we saw your video that said no black tank. That was big for my husband. Yeah. No wood, no propane, no generator. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what the heck is this? And that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so and then awesome. after meeting, fault. and then Terry, after meeting Terry, the group, everything, mm -hmm. it just was, you know. And then we joined the little van cult we have here. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it. Yeah. And we love it. Um, Guy, you, I'm going to give you a shout out. And Tom, I see you in the background there. Um, so Guy has a, a YouTube channel. Guy, what is the name of your YouTube channel? Uh, the name of the channel is Amore Van, and I just have to correct you. It's Guy and Roseanne who have that channel. Oh, I, oh. I, I couldn't do it without my lovely wife. Uh, yeah. and, uh, so true. Van, we just did if you're interested in our travels or our van, you can check it out there. And we just did a video with Roseanne as a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and a guy uh, touring their 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 um, their transit uh, based um, Dolphin Embassy RV. So if you haven't seen that video, you want to see that. Tom, we did a tour of your van as well, um, yeah, we and we did. Um, and you have a YouTube channel, sir? Yes, I do. It's called Joy and Route. J O Y E N R O U T E on YouTube. And you're a solo traveler as well. Yes, I'm a solo traveler, and I'm kind of chronicling my journey around, just kind of wandering aimlessly, but enjoying the ride. And you're full, and time. full time. And I am full time, yeah. Full time, which is pretty cool. In the S, S model being the single couch, right? Correct. So we did a video with Tom, and if you're interested in how to maximize your garage storage, <laughs> you know, in this video we did, um, Tom has some amazing tips on that. What's the number one thing on the, on the survey today was, uh, organization tools. So that's pretty cool. Um, anybody else want to uh, talk about camper van or what, what else you looked at? Otherwise, we'll move to van gear. And we see a lot of questions coming in. So hang tight. Um, in fact, maybe should we do look at those questions really fast? What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, if you could help us out with this being the format, three stars, three question marks, and then that might help me see it further. We're going to... Um, uh, let's see. Here's <laughs> Roads of Life has a couple of questions. Only, only, 
he also has a, um, a, a super sticker. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I don't have my jingle jar. It's it's in uh, Tennessee, and I'm in Florida. So sorry about that. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. So, um, <laughs> Embassy and Scott Watson, number one. Appreciate that. Let's see. Question from Rob is. What's the best part of an embassy? We're going to cover that, Rob, here as soon as the gear is over. So if you can hang tight on that, um, we do want to get to that. But, you know, kind of claims to fame from the group, right? No no solar, no black tank, no wood, no propane, no awning, no solar, no kidding. HOA friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a good one from uh, Roads of Life. He always asks these very uh, circumspective questions. What do you wish embassy owners at, uh, would embassy change in their design? What do you wish embassy would change in their design, embassy owners? Make them bigger on the outside and smaller on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> you meant the opposite. <laughs> bigger on the inside. inside you small, said the, oh, yes. smaller on the outside. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So they're really big on the inside, but then when you drive them, they're really small. <laughs> Make it like a tarp, right. in other words. <laughs> but, but I don't think you can do that. So nothing. Yeah, can do that. Uh, Let's see, a couple more questions. I'm looking for the format so you can help us out here. Um, this is kind of along the same lines as Roads of Life, who ha has a YouTube channel called Roads of Life about his embassy RV experiences. So Pam wants to know, group, what is the number one thing they love or wish they could change in their embassy RV? That's a Well, well here's one tip, because if there's something you want to change, embassy is always improving and growing. And a lot of times, the changes they make can retrofit into some of the vans that have been purchased a couple of years ago. So if there's things sometimes you want to change, maybe we can get it. And we just saw it today. Yeah. yeah. And um, in, uh, Mark and uh, Vicky's van. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 They're really good about listening to the owners and analyzing what it would take to implement that and does that then get implemented across the line and to your point even retrofitting backwards which is pretty cool a uh, couple more questions here then we'll show gear I'm, people are really excited about the gear um so embassy owner from Ginny, i have only had my van a week can someone tell me if there's enough battery power to use an instant pot uh, what about a waffle iron in a van holy cow wow <laughs> okay yeah. yeah we have two users here go marcia I use all electric appliances. I do have an Instapot. I can boondock for three days and still have almost 50% power. No problems. Yep, I have an Instapot as well. I've got one too. <laughs> <laughs> and Don, you have a waffle maker, Deb? Oh yeah, I've got a waffle yeah. maker and I use it for grilled cheese sandwiches and biscuits, and all, whatever I can squish in. And, and have, an air fryer. I, yeah. And all you have to do yeah. is drive to charge it or you can start your engine. I've never had to do that in three days. I use my high powered uh, hair dryer takes a lot of wattage. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, Sean, uh, Rob, with a hair dryer. <laughs> yours, yours is not on very long, huh, guy? <laughs> um, Rob, Roads of Life wants to know how many people made it to the meetup? I think, how many vans did you say? 18 vans, right? Yeah, 18 vans, about 30 people. We had Six or eight wannabes come and look today. We have one more arriving tomorrow in a in some other brand uh, and mm. wants to look at embassy. <laughs> and we welcome anyone yes. yep. come. This is one big family. So awesome. that's again, yeah. I mean the van's important, the floor plan's super important, but it's the it's the it's the people at the end of the day. Um, here's some embassy owners watching. Here's Greg. Say hello to you, sir. And hey, We've got some amazing um, screens for your cab windows. If you want fresh air coming into your cab, whether it's a Sprinter Transit or ProMaster, I call them GJs. You can go to my website and uh, it clicks off to a, uh, an email to Greg. You can buy those. Um, they're 100 bucks for a pair. I, I, now, this time of year is perfect. You can use them all the time, right? It's just lovely. Um, I saw one more. Here's Anchor uh, saying hello uh, hey, to hey, Gina. Gina and Jeff. Hi. Hey, Jeff. Um, okay, so let's. Um, do one more and then we'll talk about gear. So this is from, I get this name wrong, F Chase uh, for Cindy and Pete, uh, AC windows that open Max Air fan impression. They're, oh. they're here. They're here. They're they have here. their van here. We have a question for Cindy and Pete. No, come no. over here. <laughs> come over here. Come to the studio. Lickety split. They want to know about the AC windows and the Max Air fan. We can come back. We'll come back around. The click right note version is they love it. They love it. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, let's talk uh, some van uh, travel gear, not van gear, but uh, stuff you travel with in your van to make your uh, experience better. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the Be Streak Free Cloth, which is sold by writingawave.com. So uh, that's what it is. And who's going to talk about that? Me. Okay. So <laughs> we, we just had a Zoom meeting and uh, somebody said, how do you wash your van? And especially when you're on the road, if you stay in a campground, they say, hey, you can't wash your van in the campground. Well, I use my collapsible bucket and you use this uh, streak-free cloth only with water. And this is my used one. Whoops. <laughs> this is my used one. But it comes like this. I start with the windows, wipe the windows down. Uh, then I wa wipe the painted part of the van down and then the black part. And it truly washes the whole van down and uh, with one bucket of water. So I love it. And you can use it for other things too inside the van in your home. So multiple purposes. Excellent on mirrors. Excellent awesome on, mirrors. on mirrors. Yeah. So call that lady and get yourself some street free cloths. And it really, the bugs on the van, it, they, all the, it takes the bugs off of the van and stuff too. So, okay, I'm good. So you use it, you rinse it and you re let it dry and then you reuse it, right? That's yep, cool. yep. Okay. And you can wash it, but when you clean it so many times, but it's, it's still now, holding together. It's a lovely gray color now. I know. <laughs> yeah. That is so great. So again, um, writingawave.com is where you can get that item. And the next up is Grubs Disposable Rinse-Free Bathing Wipes. I am dying to hear about these. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. So we're talking about taking showers in the vans. Most of us have not used them. Some have. And I'm on women's groups and we talk about a lot of people that travel in SUVs and minivans. And so I've seen this, the rinse free sponges. And it's amazing the amount of soap that's in here. You can't over wet it because you'll have lather like crazy. You just a little bit of water and you wash yourself and you can either air dry or dry it. And then your skin's really soft and you don't have to rinse. And it's, it's a really easy way to get clean in the van. And you can use it again. Yes, you can. No, you can use it soaking. again. Yeah. And, and it's until like- it, Until it stops being so Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I wouldn't use it many times. But <laughs> twice, <laughs> twice. Like, like a washcloth in your bathroom. You can use yeah. it a few times and then just throw it away. And they come dry. They come dry yeah, so they're yeah, not just, wet. Yeah, they're just this, in this dry oh. package. Yeah. And you get 25. 25 for about $10 on That's Amazon. Awesome. That's a deal. Yeah. So um, this product you can find on, on Amazon. Yes. Um, yes. How did you discover this? I saw some uh, uh, social media cost me so much money because I see all these people posting about things. And this was one of the things I saw. And I love it. It's one of the things. That's that's so great. Great. Let's get over now. Yeah. Uh, so we'll do um, you with the... We want to give a shout out to Tom, who's right behind you there with the hat. So, Tom, thanks for setting this up technically and for your Starlink connection tonight. Um, oh, yes. Shout out. Otherwise, this probably wouldn't be happening. So, thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Next up on our list is uh, I'm excited about this one. This is the uh, Venti Original Portable Fan Wireless Battery. Does it have a light on the bottom? What yes. Is this? <laughs> okay. So, I have to give credit to Carry On Vagabond's channel. That's where I saw this. Yep, I the Venti, that. it's tiny. Well, you see how small it is. And then it goes up, up, up. Woo and it's super, <laughs> the thing about it that I love, well, let me turn the light on. It has three levels of lights. Oh, wow. It's uh, USB charged. Let me turn the power on here. Yeah. And yeah, it's on. It is so super quiet. I didn't, it, has I didn't four, it, it has four levels. That's the highest. And then, oh, it also has, let me get this out, except you don't see my jacket now. Um, it has a little inside joke there. It has this cute little remote that fits right in here, right in, in the circle there. And then, best thing, oscillates. The thing oscillates, we keep it on the kitchen sink. No. Not. It doesn't have to be the whole way up. It oscillates, we supplement our air conditioning with that, and it just moves uh, air throughout the van. And it lasts all night. It lasts, I don't know how long. This thing has been charged up for, it's still running. It just, it's so awesome. So Scott, I think you should get one. <laughs> and there you go. Come so, to the oh yeah, let me show you the care. Okay, so oh, turn it off turn and then, it off. then it goes, it goes down. And all you do is, I, I was practicing this earlier, so I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> because, you know, Ed usually does mechanical stuff. 
And then, okay, so that's it there. And then here's the little handy dandy carrying case that also has comes with a strap that I put on it that if you're to going to the beach, you can have it. We use it outside too to, <laughs> for bugs. Seriously, you can take it anywhere. So awesome. That is really cool. I might be getting myself one of those. I have a cool fan, but it's uh, 110 volt. Really, um, really quiet. So quiet. Yeah. And your, your point on really maximizing your running off battery, the AC air conditioner, uh, just moving the air around vastly improves that. Um, in fact, you may, a lot of times I've found I don't even need the AC on if, if I can move the air around, uh, which is great. Thank you for sharing. That's a cool product. Um, I, and this again, it's uh, it's available uh, on Amazon. So just uh, that's what it looks like and you can scroll through that. Uh, next up on our travel gear is coffee. So, uh, who's, who's up for the coffee? This must be Guy. That's me. <laughs> so, uh, my wife, Roseanne, doesn't drink coffee, so I'm the only one drinking coffee, and I was looking for a simple way to make a single cup of coffee in the morning. And the criteria uh, that I was looking for is I didn't want to have to plug anything in. I wanted ease of uh, cleanup, uh, and, and uh, I didn't want to have to stand over it while I was making coffee. And so uh, you know, most coffee drinkers are probably familiar with a, a pour-over uh, uh, coffee contraption like this, mm -hmm. where it sits on top of the mug, you put the filter and, and the coffee in the filter. But what with most uh, pour over contraptions, what you have to do is stand over it and drip the coffee in a little at a time. Uh, and I, I don't have that kind of patience. And, and, and so what I like about the OXO is it has this drip reservoir. Right? And so uh, I can just uh, go ahead and uh, fill it up all the way. I can go about the rest of my uh, morning routine, come back in about three or four minutes, and it will have uh, slowly dripped through these holes into the grounds, and I've got my uh, hot cup of coffee ready to go, and I just toss the filter in the garbage and, uh, and a paper towel, and it's all I need to, to clean this and have it uh, ready for the next day. So ease of cleaning, uh, no electricity, um, and, uh, and I don't have to stand over it. And so uh, I, like, uh, I like simple designs. It's one of the reasons I love the embassy because uh, they, they keep things simple and consistent with that. Uh, uh, I, I love this for making my cup of coffee in the morning. That is so cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, and again, thank you, Guy. This is, um, again, you can find this on Amazon. Um, Target carries a lot of OXO products uh, or Myers. I've seen that uh, Myers uh, has a lot of uh, products. So, next up on our list is um, this is the I, I don't even know how to say the IRONS now. It's an emergency weather radio. It makes coffee for you, it winds your. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, who, who's up next for that? Me. Yeah. All right. So on our bike trip, you know, we never knew what the weather was. You never had cell service. So this just is a um, like a NOAA weather alert radio. Um, but what's cool is there's so many ways to charge it. You can there's a solar panel. I don't know if you can see that on top. Uh, there's a crank in the back. It also can have batteries. It has USB uh, C and then it has LCD. LCD digital display. Yeah. yeah, display. It has a reading light. It has an SOS, <laughs> which I won't turn on. I will. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's an SOS, and it will flash SOS. It has speakers. Um, it's water resistant. Has a phone charger. But the main thing is, you know, if you're somewhere you don't have signal, and the weather gets bad, you can set this, and it will definitely wake you up because it is very loud. So we that just like, uh, yeah, we like having this just for peace of mind when we're somewhere where we don't have service. So apparently it doesn't make your coffee, but it will do everything else. No. Except <laughs> you know, it makes you spill your coffee when it goes off. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that's uh, available on Amazon. I think Susan and Bobby had one more you want to share. And this is, I'm curious about yeah. this. Um, this is a portable LED motion sensor light. So what is it and how are you using it? So we have our bikes out back. And as you know, you've had bikes stolen and I'm paranoid. So our bike is back there and you can just clip this on and um, 
magnetic. And if, yeah, it's yeah. magnetic. So if anybody walks by, it it goes off, and I'm looking out the window to make sure that the bike is okay. And we have forgotten about it and driven off with it, and it stayed on. <laughs> <laughs> it stayed on the van. So and I dropped it on the way up here, and it's yeah, it's still working. Yeah, it's so, really bright. <laughs> it is. It's very bright. It is very bright, and it's great in the campsite. Yeah, 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 it is. As you walk up to the van, it lights up. So and 15 feet. Yeah. 15 so I can't feet. sneak away anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has a, I was just like a 30 second then shut off. It'll shut off after 30 seconds. So that's really cool. And I just have to say one more thing. I love my blow up paddle board and we got to take it out today and it was just gorgeous. So, all right. That is cool. All right. Let's see. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I think we have one more. And this is the collapsible NSYNC strainer basin thingy. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't have a name for yep. this. And everything seems so technical. And this is just a little plastic thing that sits in the bottom of the sink. And you can put your dirty dishes in it. And you can use it for a carrying tray. And you can. Oh. There you go. <laughs> wow, look at that. So you get, it's nice to have something portable. That is cool. Like and that. it catches so it keeps the debris out of the. Yeah. It keeps yeah, well, the debris out of the sink and it preserves water. Yeah, it keeps my I know, it's a place to hide my dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and everything so, has so to have two to purposes yeah, for yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. We we talk about that a lot, but a lot of things should have dual functionality in a van because there's you're so limited on space. Thank you, Deb, for sharing that. Um again, that I think is uh I don't know where Deb, where'd you find that? Amazon. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon. All right. So our next segment we want to go uh, into is uh, with our owners here is why did you choose an embassy RV after you decided a van was the way to roll and what you looked at wasn't really what you were seeking. You discovered the embassy and what's um, the question we sort of went, whoa, answered. Um, actually, let me, let, before we do that, let's answer some more questions. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. We got some good ones coming in here, and I see a super chat. We want to give them a shout out for that. Uh, Karen White, thank you very much. Uh, thank, you, for, <laughs> thank you, Karen, for that. Uh, Chip, I appreciate that. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Um, <laughs> appreciate that. Let's see. I was up here with the. Uh, uh, bear with me one second. Y'all are asking a lot of good questions. There's this one. Did we get an answer for this one yet? The uh, Windows Max Air Fan. I think, over. Uh, they they're keep, busy. They just they're keep saying they love it. <laughs> uh, um, Fish, Fish the 50 wants to know, uh, owners, what do you think of your Lavio? That'd be the drive plush toilet. I love my Lavio. Great stuff. Alliterative. I yeah. love, we love our Lavio. We also love our Lavio. Yeah. <laughs> love you, love me. <laughs> you, I love it. Yeah. I love the Lavio for a night myself. It was pretty cool. Love it. Uh, when I stayed in the van at Embassy. Let's see. Um, oh, Rob says, Scott, tell everyone in New Hampshire, I miss them. And they're so glad they're together and having a great time. Roads of life. <laughs> yeah, we miss you. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, Peggy wants to know where's Bob Scott? He's there. Over at the fire. <laughs> he started libation right early. Uh, He's next uh, to Peter and, and Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> talking about the the Max Air fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, David Green, what a great segue. Um, what is your favorite feature on your embassy RV? That is exactly what we're gonna talk about next. So hang tight. And um, let me go here. So what I want to have the owners talk about is, you know, again, why embassy RV? And these are kind of the two questions to answer, please. Again, why embassy RV? We ticked off some of the what it doesn't have, which is really popular. And then what's your favorite feature of your embassy RV? Kind of to David's um, point there. So who would like to go first? I will. Uh, my favorite feature is the no wood. Our daughter has a mold illness and just the fact that it's never going to mold. You know, it's amazing. The fit and finish is the reason we bought it. They look good after using them for 10 years. And you you won't find many used ones out there. Well, yeah, we keep them be, <laughs> keep a long time. Um, who else? Why, uh, why MC and your favorite feature? The heat. 
because of these nights. It's very, <laughs> very warm in there. The heat is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, um, Bob, just tell us how the um, the heat works, because it's a little different. And where does the heat source come from? All right. He uses a SBAR system, and it uses the, the coolant from your engine, and it runs through a little heater in the back, and then there's a fan that blows through it. And it only uses about a gallon of gasoline every 24 hours. So we can turn that thing on, let it run, and it is nice and toasty in there. Yeah, I nice. think Terry said like a quarter of a gallon. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Over 24 hours or quite a few hours, but yeah. And whether it's um, gasoline or diesel, it uses chassis fuel for the, as a um, fuel yeah. source, right? Yeah. Okay. And everything, all your major components are inside. So if it's freezing out, you just have to keep the inside of the coach up, you know, above freezing. And <laughs> it truly is a three, four, four, yeah, four season, season vehicle. Yeah. That is so great. Anybody else? Yeah, that's right. We had our we had our van in 14 degrees below zero, uh, and uh, the water uh, continued to flow well, and it was perfectly comfortable inside. That is something I can say I've never done, will never do. <laughs> <laughs> My van would freeze like an ice cream. Um, so, uh, 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 Rosanna Guy, I can stay in your van when we go ice fishing with... Um, that's right. <laughs> I'll be I'll be doing ice fishing, fishing watching while, while you're right. I know, right? Dude, what's a Wednesday from the ice fishing hole? Yikes! Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Uh, so anybody else want to go on those two questions? Why Why Embassy and your favorite feature? The integrity of Embassy. They have such a a good value system, and they stand behind their product and great customer service. And they treat the customers like family. It's it's it's, it's truly a, a wonderful company. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Here, here. Here, here. And, and like you pointed out, Scott, they listen to us. So if there's some things that we want to change, and because they're not huge, they they can make those changes if it makes sense. So. And I think the other thing that you know, Terry and I did that video um, that released a few weeks ago. You know, how to buy an embassy RV. It never. I don't think we talk about this enough, but you're not buying through a dealer. If, if you hate the RV buying experience because of the dealership situation, the pricing situation, um, you buy factory direct from these guys, you're dealing with the builders themselves. There's no middleman, there's no RV salesperson, there's no RV lots to go you know, crawling through and being harassed at. Um, and I think it's, it's to your point, Marsha, it's just part of the family experience. And they really want the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Terry does all the walking through uh, as, as your deliveries coming on as you're doing your delivery, right? He does it. You're not getting the 35 minute rush through with a tr traditional um, dealer uh, experience, right? Right, the four hour and overnight and the next day, and you stay another night if you need it, it's however much you need to. And and be long before delivery, I think what, you know, what I think everybody here has in common is that each of us at some point when our van went on, uh, the production line or was about to go on the production line had a sit down uh, with terry to discuss our particular build um, and, and how our build was being handled and what options we had chosen how it was all going to come together so you know what other uh, rv manufacturers do you know where you can do that where you get an individual discussion with the vice president of the company to go over your build before it starts which is pretty impressive. Again, it's it's a very different experience from start to finish. I get asked a lot, why don't I have an embassy RV? Um, the floor plan just isn't <laughs> what I, right? Bob and, Bob and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bob and have one that's closest and I haven't really spent any time in years, but um, it's, it's, I just love everything about them and the, the community we've, and the family we've built together over the years. And it's just, it's just so great to be a part of it, even though I'm not in one. I don't think you have to be in one to be part of the family uh, is kind of the deal. So uh, let me just kind of splash this on the screen again. If you are uh, wanting more information, this is the place to go. Uh, watch that video that Terry and I did. It's 10 steps to get your embassy RV. It's pretty different than the traditional buying process, but very simple, very personable, very hands-on embassyrv.com and then be sure and uh, uh, this is just a great place of engagement. Sherry, maybe just talk for a second about this and you guys do Zoom and this is the Facebook group. So if you go to Facebook and just search embassy owners and wannabes, this pulls up. Is that right? And how's this yep. work? 
Yep. And uh, I have, uh, I'm one of the admins and Bob Scott and Robert whom I got to give a shout out to them. Great group of people to administer, but just go ahead, find that, join the group. If you answer the questions, you're automatically, you don't need to wait for us to approve you. And every uh, second Tuesday of the month, we have a zoom meeting and it's just the, it's the owners and wannabes and stuff. And people can talk freely about maybe issues they've had or they forgot how to do something. We've had a couple of things where people have actually uh, their induction or wasn't working and somebody talked them through the, where to find the breaker. Um, it's just a you know great community. So we have that Zoom every second Tuesday. And uh, yeah, we, and we have meetups like this and then we join your meetups and um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's so great. Um, Bob, I'm going to zoom in. Um, Bob Scott, just raise your hand back there. Say hello. There you go. Oh, oh my God. God. Yay. 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 <laughs> that's so great. I just love this. Yeah, the group wouldn't be the same without them. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Um, so everybody give a thumb up for the program tonight. We are taking away their camping and fellowship time, but I uh, really appreciate you guys. we got a few more questions coming in. So let's do that. And then um, we'll get ready for a libation live because it's about that time of day, I think. <laughs> so uh, some questions here. Uh, this is a, this is kind of a cool one. Let's see. They're all cool. Uh, CJ wants to know this is from Marsha. What have you learned about hosting a successful uh, meetup? And I'm taking it myself. Well, we're Boondockers Welcome Host. So we, we love having RVers come to our, our property. And I had gone to a women's meetup and I invited them to come here. And so I had about 12 vehicles here and that worked out very well. And it's just, you know, making sure we have room for everybody. We have the outdoor space. We have a covered gazebo and a fire pit. So we had the spots. And so it's just a matter of figuring out how many we can fit in. And it's a wonderful group. So they're very easy to host. Yeah. It's and, so good. And she's, being, she's one of, she's now gained status where she's like a uh, boondockers welcome, like oh, super, super host, like it's lifetime, extraordinary. 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 Yeah. So, <laughs> and her and her husband, Grand Bruce, are just the best hosts ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so the the Put the word out, Scott. We'll head your way next, buddy. <laughs> the, sign, <laughs> the sign on our gazebo says we sleep around. With a, with a camper. <laughs> <laughs> you should put that up there. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for being a Boondocker Welcome um, host site. It's just so important for RVers. If you're not familiar with the Harvest Hosts um, and Boondockers Welcome, part of the same program. It's about, what, 9,000 places you can stay across America now, commercial property or private property like yours, Marsha. And I stay on those um, pretty regular. It's part of my the way I roll being a full-timer. So thanks again for being part of that program. It's so great. You'll probably recognize these folks, Frank and Sharon, an embassy RV owner on their Oregon hey, coast. Sharon. <laughs> uh, Pam wants to know, um, so you don't have to have the engine on for the heat to run, correct? Talk about the no, furnace. Right. No, right. not at all. Mm -hmm. No, no, we're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just pulls from the chassis fuel uh, tank and um, the, the oh, little furnace. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, but it's, yeah. Um, Lori's got a question here. Uh, putting water in the tank when it's cool out, do you lose all the heat out of the van? What is the biggest bladder you can get? Maybe somebody can explain how uh, Embassy RV does fresh water because it's very different than the other folks. Um, and then answer the question here. All right, it's, a, it's 23 gallons of fresh water. And one of the things that you can do is Embassy puts these, I don't want to say holes in the floor because there's a plug in there. And you can remove the plug and feed the water hose up through that hole. And then you can do the gravity fill or you can connect it to city fill, but most of us just do gravity fill. So you don't really have to have the back doors open to uh, fill your water. You can just feed it up through the, the, uh, the, the component or the part, the hole that Terry has there. You literally could bring gallon jugs in and, mm -hmm. and put it down yeah. if you really you want to do that, that too. way. Yeah. Or, yeah, or just warm weather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the best warm answer. Yeah. Stay in warm weather. But if you have to, you don't have and to open the doors. I so wish I had gravity fill. I'm, I am a reliant on pressurized sources for water. And to your point, Marcia, just, you know, even if you, I'm not a huge guy of drinking them out of plastic bottles, but, you know, getting the big gallons and just dumping them in the thing. 
in the bathroom area um, really makes a lot of sense to me. And then you're never without water, which is pretty That's cool. You have to go find a hose, which is pretty great. And on the, I think this, the, the bladder thing. So I have a fixed size tank that hangs on the underside of my van. Um, it's, a, it's like 12 gallons, I think. No, it's 18, 18 gallons. Um, but it's exposed to the weather. So they have a heating pad, but all the plumbing lines are outside. So my, my van is not um, for season and it's, and Terry's is it's usually um, a bladder system. MCRV uses a bladder system from the yachting industry, so it, yeah. it, it, it the, the gray and the um, fresh from the same same area, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's all about, inside. Yeah. So about the ozone. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very different approach. Let's see. Mark's got a question here. Um, is anyone traveling to the June meetup next year? Interested in a stopover just north of Lebanon, Indiana, about three hours to the campground. Uh, could stage 10 to 12 vans. That would be the before. Oh, or after. All right. oh wow. <laughs> so reach out to the embassy group uh, on Facebook there. Uh, Mark, you might have some fans. I might join you if it's uh, yeah. around yeah. The, yeah. the June t uh, time frame. That would be great. And we don't have dates yet, but we are um, right sure are we talking with embassy on um, planning an event for next year. So it's going to be at the same location, probably the first weekend of June. Um, what else can we share publicly at this point? Not much. Yeah, I think, and we talked. We asked. I asked Terry recently if it was going to be that first weekend where Friday is May thirty first, and you know the first and the second, or would it be the first full weekend? And right now he's thinking it would be that first weekend that's May thirty first, Friday, and then June first and second. But he was going to confirm. So, and uh, they're going to work out registration details, and you'll see things on the website. And I'm sure Scott will have the information. So. They want to start to get that out soon. Yeah. And we had such a great time last, I can say last year, it was just a few months ago. <laughs> um, let's see, Jack, i uh, got a good question here. He's in Georgia. I'm coming through your area, Jack. Does Embassy have a Facebook user group? And if so, how many participants? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Embassy late. owner oh. and wannabe in 1700. Okay. That is so great. And we'd love to have you join, Jack, even if, uh, even if you're not going to get an Embassy, come join the fun. He's uh, he's I uh, met him. Yeah, he's a great guy. At the um, Super Show two years ago, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, let's see, one question here, then we'll do Libation Live. Um, Van Can Do, D-E-W, will Embassy copy your floor plan along with some awesome battery system you have? So I get asked this a lot, and the answer is no, they're not going to copy. They kind of do their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, but they do make tweaks based on customer feedback. So Bob and Susan are in a, a van that's similar to mine. There's a front lounge and a back lounge where the bed is. So um, that was customer feedback that made that happen. Um, and they do have an awesome battery system like my Volta system. So they use Master Volt and it's um, similar. Um, Embassy would argue better, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's a very lithium system that gets you shore power anywhere you want. And when you drive, you charge and it's, it's pretty awesome folks, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, good question here. They'll do libation live. Who's going to Chattanooga next month? So there's the Adventure Van Expo the first weekend in October. I'm going to be there. There's a few folks. We had a big er, big ish. Up to that point, maybe, I don't know. Other than the June camp out. Um, anybody going from the, the, the group here? I think, yeah. well, I, there's two people I know for sure going. And after this meetup, I was going to get in there and try to. Uh, rally the troops and see who's going. Um, I'm not going to make it this year, but I know for sure two and maybe a couple more. But that Vantopia. Is... But, oh, Vantopia. So last year, the first year, we made an embassy row, and now we're officially several embassy rows. Oh, in Florida. In Florida. Mm -hmm. Florida. Yeah. It's really awesome. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember the new URL off the top of my head. It's Peace Love Vans. I think. Yeah, love love Vans. Vans. Yeah. It's on my website. Um, I think between Embassy, Go Small, we've got we got four streets, right? And <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be there. Um, we're probably going to have close to what, 50, 60 vans associated with us, which is so awesome. Um, <laughs> and Embassy's going to be there, so you'll you'll want to check that out. Oh, Jack's going to be in Chattanooga. That's awesome. Uh, that's good, Jack, because I got some uh, bourbon we need to get through because I got no more space for no more. <laughs> Um, speaking of bourbon, let's do libation live. Bob, I want to know what you're drinking. That'd be. <laughs> oh, I'm not drinking. <laughs> um, so I'm doing libation live tonight. Um, and the reason we do libation live is because uh, I like to talk about 
things I find from the road and then share them out with you all, whether it's uh, like a harvest host, a brewery, distillery, wine, something like that. Even um, Sherry, what was that thing that we had at the um, at your farmer's kombucha. market? Kombucha. Oh, yeah. kombucha. Marsha makes, makes her own yeah. kombucha. We should have brought that out here. Oh, oh, oh she's got that it. So um, I have to admit, I didn't discover this on the road. I discovered it in, in the fridge that a uh, harvest home, that a uh, Airbnb <laughs> guest left behind. So um, <laughs> that's one of the best things about being an Airbnb host is you can, they leave behind a lot of booze. Um, and this is what it is. It's ranch rider spirits.com is where you find it. And uh, they kind of do the, uh, a little twist on the, the seltzer stuff. Uh, it's either tequila, which this one is. And it's got jalapeno in it, which this is going to be really interesting. Oh, either going to love it or yeah. hate it. Uh, <laughs> that sounds horrible. So, <laughs> sounds, I know, right? I'm like, oh. Can you pass uh, it, pass it through the screen? <laughs> All right. Watch my face. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. It's so great. <laughs> There's a reason he left it in the fridge. <laughs> Can't be that bad. Uh, no words are necessary there, I don't think. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, it's not bad. I can't think of the two. It's an acquired taste. You have to do 10. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, so let's do this uh, day in history because I think this is kind of interesting. Uh, oh, there it is. Jalapeno or ranch water. That's what I was drinking. A four pack is they're kind of expensive. Um, All right. That's good. That's I like good. the carbs. It's it's not sweet, which is actually kind of nice. So cheers to. Okay. This day in history. On this day, 25 years ago, the Google Internet search engine retroactively claims this date as its birthday. <laughs> I don't know how you oh. check AI in it. <laughs> So 25 years ago, it, 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 yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, 85 years ago, the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth is launched from Glasgow, oh. UK, which is kind of cool. And I chose this one, a wreck of the old 97. If anybody's a train buff, they're probably going to know about this um, this train wreck. It was pretty uh, calamitous. A lot of people died. And later, they um, a, a song was written about it, kind of like the Edmund Fitzgerald, the boat sh sh sinking, right? Um, this is off the Wikipedia site. It was a pretty bad train wreck. And what happened is they were going way over speed, trying to hit a deadline because uh, a, a train carrying, carrying mail was derailed over this, um, this, uh, this truck. Right. Caught fire. Um, none of the mail survived, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, and what kind of caught my eye about it was I was actually in the Chattanooga Art Museum uh, just a couple days ago. Uh, before I flew out, and this is an artist representation of that same oh, wow. disaster. Wow. Look at that, right? Talk about glamorizing. Yeah. <laughs> it was really kind of interesting. So, um, so that's what happened this day, uh, 100 and how many days years ago? 120 years ago, which is pretty incredible, wow. uh, right? We still have bad train wrecks, it's just amazing, you know. Planes have stopped falling out of the air, but trains keep crashing, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, which is great. Um, all right, a couple more questions here, and we will call a wrap. I'll let you guys get back to your campsites. Thank you so much for doing this. It's just been so great. Um, Karen White, oh, good question here from Karen White for the owners. Did anyone have an inspection done by the NRVTA certified inspector? Do you recommend? We don't need to be inspected. <laughs> no, but um, there is a there is a sticker on the right. inside of one of the doors that says it's certified. So, RIVA, isn't it? RVIA. No. Oh, that's RVIA. Yeah. yeah. No. None of us. I bet I know of. One that's what you're going to to use. Okay. Um, Kyle, you want to pop in and say hi to folks? <laughs> yeah, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Kyle. Kyle, you can do it, Kyle. We want Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, we Kyle. 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 <laughs> just come wait my quick. <laughs> just poke your head around. <laughs> He's got to puff up his hair. Okay, just say hi to folks. Hurry, just come say hi. I'm going to hat naked. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we might have a shirt. <laughs> on my shirt, so he's a, he's a little embarrassed. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I got a question for some of the owners. What advice would you give to somebody that's shopping for a van? 
Buy an embassy. Buy an embassy. Buy an embassy. <laughs> <laughs> You got a bunch of support. Here who, we are. Who rented first? You can't an rent one. Can't rent one. one. Well, we have had a, we had a couple of wannabes here, and they were kind of trying to figure that out. And we said, you know, make a list of how, you know, they were saying make a list of how they would use the van. Um, because you, did, you are making a, a big investment. So I think it's important to say, you know, how would you use the van? Where would you travel? What would you do with it? And then that would also dictate the layout and and talk to people, you know, like, and if you're interested in embassy, you can join the group and ask us or get on the Zoom calls, uh, to, you know, talk to people and participate in Scott's channel, watch some of like Joy and Route and Amore Van and some of the other vans. And sure, I, I think, think do rent one, do do rent one. Rent you can one? go out and rent different yeah, different, different, different RVs different. and right. not an embassy, but you can rent a Travato or something. Mm -hmm. Just try it and see if you want to live in that small space. Yeah. And we did have someone rent a van to, for Florida. He rented a, um, just the, the transit. The transit. It, it was just an empty out. van. So that's the possibility too. Yeah. Right. Just so you know about driving the poor transit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he yeah. he's bought one. He yeah. bought an embassy. Yeah, so great, good advice. Um, we'll watch, watch for a couple more questions. Let's do song of the week. Um, as I alluded to, this is, uh, comes from the train disaster, <laughs> which is, wow. I don't know. <laughs> but um, wreck of old ninety seven. And if you haven't heard this, um, it's kind of a catchy tune. It's been written or it's been it was released in nineteen twenty four, a long time ago, one year after the train wreck. By the way, no, no. Uh, like 20 years after the train wreck, right? Um, by Grayson and Whittier, I think it was. It was the first million dollar selling country song. Oh, wow. It's been, it's been performed by so many artists. I kind of picked the Boxcar Willy one because you got a lot of train sounds in the background. So if you haven't heard this one, um, it's kind of a toe tapper. Johnny Cash probably did the one that's most, but his version, but this one had train whistles and stuff in it. So I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so song of the week right there for you. And let's see if there's any more questions. Uh, so this uh, person, uh, F Chase, um, anyone with a Ford Transit long 19 foot? All the transits are the big ones, right? I think missing? they only built one ever. Is they, what Wanda said. One, one yeah. that was 19 feet. But you lose the back storage and really short kitchen right. and right. one cabinet. Right. Sometimes with those, you need, just need to work with embassy, but you may have to get the van and bring it to them. But they need to say you need to make sure it has this, 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 and then they can. But Kathy and John, do they they have a Mercedes? It's a short the Mercedes. Short yeah, yeah well, they have a short Sprinter. But yeah, I think he built one on the shorter. I think there's one in there right now that they're that's going down the line. That's right. Yes, a there's they're... a 19 footer going down the line right now. Yeah. And again, very unusual to have an RV builder that you can BYOV, bring your own van, and they'll build it out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you can, yeah, you can, he'll modify it. So you might lose a cabinet or, you know, some of the space. You might not have the back space as much, but yeah. That's great. Uh, thank you, Finn. Finn Chase. <laughs> Appreciate that. And Jerry Minchie, he's going to be on next week, ladies and gentlemen, uh, talking uh, something I know nothing about, RVing on the cheap. <laughs> it's like, uh, Jerry's coming on next week. I talk about RVing on a dime and a dream. Great guy. Um, he's pretty witty. We met at church, by the way, me and Jerry, uh, which is pretty funny. Um, that's tongue in cheek a little bit, actually. <laughs> that's what we call the bar. Uh, in Cedar Key, by the way, this had the hurricane. And um, and I talked to somebody, there, the local uh, gal that I um, you know, her, her uh, late husband. Um, and everything's coming back to life there, which is really great. All right, so I think with that, uh, let me just see if there's anything else. Big thumb up for everybody, and a huge shout out to the uh, embassy owners for putting their time and, and energy into this today to share with us all. Yay! 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 Oh, great. So with that, we'll call a wrap. We'll see everybody next week. Um, Sherry, thank you again for doing this, and all the owners. There's, I'm going to miss somebody, so I don't want to say anything. But Tom, thanks again for your um, your Starlink, because we would not be doing this without some Starlink. Pretty and sure. Peggy and Peggy Owens was the one who kind of put the uh, idea in you, it, so she gets a shout out too. And Marsha for hosting this amazing great yeah. group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 for everything. She yeah. 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 of course. <laughs> all right, guys, you have fun at the campfire. Um, roast some marshmallows, and we'll see you all soon. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Hang tight, you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>